We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Since it may be used against us, we must get ready for it, just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. First, you'll have to know what happens when an atomic bomb explodes. You'll know when it comes. We hope it never comes, but get ready. Do you recognize this photo? Do you know what city this is, or what city this used to be? This is Hiroshima, Japan, after an atomic bomb was dropped on it. This is what a city looks like when more than half the population is killed or injured in the blast of a single bomb. A bomb so powerful that one of its creators solemnly referred to himself as a god. He was not invigorated by his immense power to change the world. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. Rather devastated by his immense power to destroy it. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. On August 6, 1945, humanity took a step forward into a world that we can never return from. In a sense, humanity grew up. But as we all know, growing up means we must take responsibility. Responsibility for our past, and more importantly, responsibility for our future. I remember I was talking to a professor of mine once. I was expressing my worry of what the world will look like by the time I'm ready to have children. And he said to me, the future is dark. Not necessarily because bad things will happen, but because it's hard to see far into it. And while I appreciate Dr. Steeman's words of encouragement and hope, I am nervous. And I'm not the only one. 75 years ago, on the cover of a magazine, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists debuted this. This is the Doomsday Clock. It is a representation of the time humanity has left until total atomic annihilation. As of today, the clock is set to 100 seconds to midnight. But as you can see, that's not the norm. The clock has been set forward and back throughout the past seven decades. And looking at this chart, you might notice something a bit terrifying. We are currently closer to midnight than we have ever been before. But how is this possible? By 1947, the atomic age was alive and well, and we had just dropped the bombs two years previous. If anything, that is when we were on the brink of annihilation. Well, not exactly. In 1945, one nation had two bombs. Today, there are nine nations with thousands of nuclear weapons. And it's not just bombs anymore. Tactical atomic devices, nuclear artillery, super and hypersonic ICBMs. That being said, if you and your enemy are standing knee deep in gasoline, it doesn't much matter how many matches you have, let alone how many they do. It's safe to say that in the 20th century, humanity discovered a 23rd century technology. Not only has humanity grown up, but we grew up way too fast. There have been some efforts to control ourselves. Look at this, 17 minutes to midnight. By 1991, the Cold War was over. The Soviet Union and the United States signed START-1, a nuclear treaty of sorts. And for the first time in a very, very long time, the world feels somewhat calm. But that was the last time humanity was more than 15 minutes from midnight. And for the entire time that I have been alive, we've never been more than 10 minutes from midnight. It's been said many, many times that the use of atomic weapons can never happen again. Not by malice, not by ignorance, and not by accident. This can never happen again. Ironically, the one thing holding humanity from total annihilation might just be total annihilation. Mutually assured destruction is the idea that if everybody has their finger on the button, by the time your missiles leave your airspace, your enemy has already returned fire. And within hours, the state of the planet will make Terminator 2 look like a daydream. Of course, mutually assured destruction relies on rationality, something humanity has proved lacking in over the last hundred years. In astronomy, there's a concept of a great filter. It's an answer to the Fermi paradox, a paradox that goes a bit like this. If there are billions of stars in the galaxy, similar to our sun, 
and those stars have planets orbiting around them, and the galaxy is billions of years old. Where are the aliens? Why is it that with all of this time, and all of those chances to evolve, no species, as far as we know, has ever gone interstellar? Well, this might be because of a great filter. The idea that something prevents either life from evolving, or prevents evolved life forms from leaving their star system. The theories of what this filter actually is range wildly from life being unique to Earth because of a higher power, it could be climate change, or some incomprehensibly powerful alien species that keeps everybody in their place. While all of these theories are fascinating in their own way, I believe that atomic weapons are actually the great filter. I believe that it's possible that humanity is following in the footsteps of thousands, if not millions of species in our galaxy's 13 billion year history. It's possible that we're not the first species in the universe to evolve and discover the power of the atom. But today, we stand at a crossroads. Are we going to use this power and propel our knowledge to the status of gods and propel our explorers to the planets far beyond our reach? Or are we going to use this power to propel warheads across the planet to the homes of our fellow humans? It's hard to tell, but with the doomsday clock ticking ever closer to midnight, humanity must stay constantly vigilant to secure our future away from total atomic annihilation. So, can we do it? That's the question. I don't know. The future is dark. Not necessarily because bad things will happen, but because it's very hard to see into it. Thank you.